Everybody could please stand. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Um, one comment, um, during the board meeting, somebody left a red coat. Um, that coat is now the first uh, jacket on the coat rack. Um, I would also like to thank Rick Harmon and the staff of the Hilton for today's luncheon. Um, today is gonna be the State of the Village. Um, so I would like to uh, introduce them. Um, thank you for joining us for the first luncheon of 2015 and our sixth annual State of the Village. We are excited to welcome uh, Village President Dr. Sandra Berry. If everybody could please stand as I call your name too. As well as Village Manager Larry Deachin, Village Clerk Jane Quinlan, Human Resources Director Dan Aminsky. Sorry if I mess up anybody's name too. <laughs> um, Susie Kelly, Benefits Coordinator. Police Chief Mike Murray, Division Chief Randy Palmer, <laughs> um, Fire Chief George Sheets, Assistant Chief of Operations Scott Bowman, Bureau Chief Jim Lykel, Bureau Chief Jim McGeever, Director of Communications Bill Villanova, IT Specialist for Communications, Rich, Rich Bessett. Business License Administrator, D. Adasiak. Director of Public Works, Steve Barrett. Crew, <laughs> Crew Chief for Sewer Department, Bill Meyer. Division Manager for the Water Department, Ken Ritter. Street Division Manager, Jerry Ciccarello. Oak Finance Director, Brian Hannigan. IT Specialist, Don Swawa. In light of moving the program along, we would like to invite you to begin with your salad. The presentation will begin at 12.30 p.m. with the Village President, Dr. Berry, will be giving her State of the Village address. There will be a question and answer period after the presentation. We have put note cards on each table for you to write down any questions you have. The card will then be collected and I will, they will be read by me. Um, I just have a few announcements. I would like to introduce um, Mayor um, Barry. If everybody could just please give a round of applause. Good afternoon, thanks so much for coming. What a great turnout today. Um, I really, really appreciate it. At this point, I would like to um, have our department heads from the village and the village elected officials, if you could please come up and join me at the head table, please. Thank you. Can everyone hear me okay with the mic like this? In the back, we're good? Okay, do we have enough chairs? Before, before uh, he, he's, he uh, makes an escape, I want to recognize uh, Bill Villanova. He's our emerg emergency communications director and our former chief of police. Thank you. <laughs> S 
starting down at the end, we have Steve Barrett, our Public Works Director, uh, Fire Chief George Sheets, uh, our Finance Director Brian Hannigan, Dan Omazinski, the man who everyone uh, gets his name wrong. Uh, he's, he's our personnel uh, chief director. And representing our police chief, Mike Murray, is Randy Palmer today. Thank you. We have trustee Terry Vorderer, our village manager, Larry Deachin, our village engineer, Jack Gallagher, and our master municipal clerk, Jane Quinlan. Thank you. I want to start by saying, you know, first, thank you, Chamber, for hosting this event every year. It means a lot uh, to be able to get the word out, the positive message of the Village of Oak Lawn. There's no shortage of, of people who don't want to give the positive spin, but I want to thank you for always staying positive, all you do for the community. I want to thank everyone here who supports the Chamber as well. It's, it's an honor and a privilege to stand here and represent the village of Oak Lawn. I can't tell you what it means to me personally, and I, I'm just very humbled to be up here, and uh, it's a great community, and to be able to stand up here and tell the story of 2014 is, is a privilege. Thank you very much. I'm gonna start talking about money. We have about 145 slides to go through, so I'm, I'm <laughs> gonna go pretty quick, but, but there's a lot of stuff I'm gonna put the, the statistics and the data kind of in the front, but everyone is interested in your tax dollar. We just got our tax bill recently, and it was kind of shocking um, for all of us. We all hate paying those taxes, but it's the reality of the world. Your tax dollar, if we were divided up into 100 pennies, 71.85 pennies will go to the various school districts. Not any one school district, we're represented by several. The village is only 10.6 cents of your tax dollar. Most people think it's more than that. It's only a dime out of every dollar that you pay in, in, in property taxes. The county, MWRD, the parks and the library are all in around 5% as well. There's miscellaneous ones like township, but the majority is education and the village is second. So of that 10.6 cents, the average home is $135 per year in property taxes to the village. And, and that's on average, that's the average size home. That comes to about 36 and a quarter a month. Think of what you spent on your cell phone bill last month, your cable bill, our wonderful newspaper subscriptions and magazines. Um, I think you're getting a great value for your 36.25. $24, $24 of that is public safety. About $12 is all the other services you get, such as snow plowing, our special events, all of those wonderful village services. It's an astonishing value. The majority of what we spend goes towards public safety. Right now, of the tax levy, 66% of that goes to public safety. Public works is about 13%. Governmental services is 21%. The total budget, to put it in perspective, is $54 million that we spend running the village. And it comes from a variety of sources. The large green uh, pie wedge there is property tax. That's only about 25%. Sales tax is around 30%. The rest comes from miscellaneous taxes and fees, service charges, business fees, those kind of things like vehicle stickers. Um, majority is uh, property tax and sales tax. Now, I want you to kind of remember this slide because as we start talking about keeping taxes low, we, we really have to increase that sales tax portion of the equation. And this is where the chamber being so strong, over 300 members strong, uh, best ever, uh, comes into play. We have a Shop Oak Lawn theme this year, and uh, if we can get that 29% up, that would be awesome. Um, right now, we're getting about 14 million in sales tax. A community like Orland Park, similar size, gets double that every year, just to, just to show. Our tax levy, as I said, is 14 million six. It hit a peak in 2012. We brought in a treasurer who said, look, if we wanna keep property values high, we have to keep taxes low. In the spirit of that, we are lowering them a small percentage every year 
so that Oak Lawn remains a an attractive community to, to buy a house, to live. Um, so right now, um, it's, it's low. I don't think we're going to go back to the 2007 levels, but we want to keep them low. We're committed to keeping the tax levy low. We want to increase our, our revenue through other means, such as sales tax. I'm going to talk about our wonderful police department. In Oak Lawn, uh, we spent $16,678,000 on our police department in 2014. That budget from 2012 has gone up 19%. This year, it's over 18 million for 2015. So we, we do want to keep our police force strong. We do want to keep, uh, keep increased spending there. Police calls, 58,140 calls for service were, were made last year. That's a huge amount. Um, it goes up every year. There's little dips and, and dives, but and peaks and valleys, but in general, the trend is up every year. We are busier and busier with our police department. And we do want residents to never hesitate to call police if they have suspicious activity or any concerns. Uh, and that drives the police calls up, but that's okay. I want to highlight just briefly a safely home program that our police department came up with. Uh, they noticed that uh, there was a problem. They, they'd have people wandering in the neighborhood sometimes with Alzheimer's or, or um, developmental disabilities who couldn't identify where they were from. And, and this is a program to help the police reunite them with loved ones quicker. If anyone watching this has loved ones who may benefit from a program like this, you can sign up on the Village website. It's a great program. The information's only shared with police officers in an emergency. This is kind of a heat map of the Southwest uh, communities. Uh, source is city data. And Oak Lawn is relatively cool uh, compared to our neighbors. Chicago has high number of 562. Uh, Hickory Hills is a little lower than us at 127. Oak Lawn is 140. But we're doing very, very well, and I want to thank our police department and our community for being vigilant. How do we compare the state? OK, Oak Lawn's 140. You think a city like Waukegan's a great community? There's 306. Bloomington, Illinois. Apple Pie, Mom and Pop in Bloomington, their number is 248. Springfield's 548. East St. Louis is 1700. So Oak Lawn's doing very well. Our fire department in 2014, we spent 14,444,000. This includes a number of retro pay. You'll see a little bump up on the chart. We, um, uh, the Illinois Labor Board arbitrator wanted us to give retro pay of $1,302, and that's for 2012, 2013, and 2014. But in general, you see the slope is going up, not quite as quick as the police, but it still is increasing every year, despite that little blip. The fire department made 8,188 calls in 2014. The vast majority are EMS calls. Very few are fire, if you look on that left-hand column, you can see the peak in the valley there. Big difference. Uh, we truly need more paramedics, uh, and it's becoming very much an EMS department. Fire is still a, a critical component, obviously. Um, but the total calls there are increasing. 2013 is the yellow. 2014 is the orange. You could see the calls are going up there as well. Our population in Oak Lawn is getting older, and there are more EMS calls. And I believe that's the main reason for that spike. When we think of public safety, I think of public security. And when I think of public security, I think of funding these pensions for our first responders. I, I have really worked hard to find a way to, to solve this problem. We have two problems. One is underfunded pensions themselves. So what we should have in there historically hasn't been put in there over the years. And secondly, the, the, the amount we have to put in there to fund them just to keep treading water is increasing astronomically. So this year, uh, in 2015, we should be finding an extra $5 million in our budget to fund pensions. By 2020, that number will need to be $10 million. Now, we can get that through taxes, through property taxes. We can get that through sales tax. 
We are hoping for a solution from Springfield that will help us also. Um, but this is, this is the thing that keeps me up at night. If you want to know what slide does it, it's this one. Because our, we have men and women serving us and, and there's no way to pay for their pension presently. I want to talk about Dispatch. 2014, we partnered with NORCOM. It's a unique public-private partnership. The village spent $3,703,000 um, $703, on and, and a lot of this money includes severance packages and the overtime related to the transition. Oak Lawn presently dispatches for four police departments, six fire departments, a 27 square mile area, and we serve a population of 126,000. In, in total, 183,000 incidents were processed in the center in 2014. The Oak Lawn portion, 86,000 calls were processed. It's huge, and this number is increasing every year as well. I'm proud to say that 94.9% um, are answered in less than 10 seconds. This is wonderful. Uh, in 2014, 76.9% of calls are wireless. This is important for two reasons. The village gets back a smaller portion from wireless users compared to landline users. So our, our, our income for, for funding this department is reducing as people shift towards more wireless. In addition, the wireless make the calls more complicated and the technology more complicated. It's more difficult to dispatch the wireless calls because the locations are not always exact. It's, it's a totally different animal. So I thought that number was important that people know. Just going to talk about public works a little. Uh, 2014, we did surface quite a bit of streets. You could see them on the map throughout there. There's obviously a lot more to do. We have about 183 miles of streets in Oak Lawn. And when you think of resurfacing, I think of plowing after the last couple weeks, and uh, they did a great job. Water main replacement, we're slowly picking away at this. The area was mostly in District 2 last year. The sanitary sewer repair, this is directly related to flooding problems. Uh, so these are areas um, that they spent a lot of time and they're, they're putting in liners and reinforcing and, and re reinforcing. Uh, and these are older parts of town. After the winter of 2013-2014, our, our water department had a record number of water main breaks. There were 143 water main breaks all over. And imagine the difficulty of the guys working in, in the weather and freezing conditions. Uh, just a heroic job. I just really appreciate how hard they've worked for that, that keeping us going with our water. There's a few projects. I, I could do slides on all of these, but you have to draw the line. Um, we're, we're doing a $171 million regional water system upgrade. Of this, um, 30 million alone will be at the Harker and Reich pumping stations. Um, what's really cool with these, uh, the Reich pumping station, as the turbine moves the water through, it's going to automatically generate electricity that we could sell back to ComEd. So that's pretty cool. It'll actually pay as it processes water down the pipeline. The $400,000 is an IDOT one at Southwest Highway in Cicero. This one's wrapping up in the spring. Uh, this was to improve the safety of that intersection and the signals. At 110th and Cicero, they're 90% complete. This is a $300,000 50-50 village project with the developer on 111th there. The developer's called Hamilton Partners. MWRD, the county and the village, have a complete street project on 103rd Street. Um, this will go from Cicero to Central. The goal is to eliminate flooding. It's projected to cost over $10 million. We're looking at a 2016-2017 timeline on that. Uh, Southwest Highway and Central, the new signal is up for the left turn lanes. It's awesome. That was a $1.5 million project, joint project, majority by the county, and I want to thank Cook County uh, Commissioner John Daly for his help with that, and our trustee in that district, Alex Olenichek, who really spearheaded that project. Thank you, guys. We have a bike pedway we're looking to do over Cicero and 111th. We have $100,000 for phase one engineering. This was approved and underway. It's a federal, state, local funding kind of combo project. 
and important to our Children's Museum at Brant Street and 95th, the new traffic signal and new Eastway entrance to the Patriot Station area is a $1.5 million project. IDOT uh, is doing 30% engineering. Um, the public hearing on that is in May. Construction is looking at 2016 on that one. Harlem and 95th, um, there's uh, about 20 acres there that can be developed by changing the design of it into what's called a single point urban diamond, a spud. Uh, it'll cost $17 million. That's a federal IDOT program. The preliminary engineering is underway on that. And then lastly, uh, Kelly Burke. Is Kelly here? She's normally at these. Sorry, I want to acknowledge her help with this. Repaving Cicero from 95th to 87th Street. Um, the bids are being awarded this spring, and the construction will happen this summer. So there's a lot on that little slide, but I wanted to tell people what we're working on, and, and these are big projects we could all be proud of. Um, this says water main breaks, but it really should say ash tree removal. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, in 2014, 164 trees were, were uh, taken due to the emerald ash borer damage. How does this compare to 2013? It's about half. And it's devastating. For those of you who love the tree-lined streets of Oaklawn, this is a really, really hard, hard problem. So our Oaklawn foresters have been to, at work. They've planted 242 trees. And they're not all ash trees. They're not all maple trees. They're not all oak trees. They're trees that we will never have in Oak Lawn, thanks to diversity of, of species. 58 varieties have been planted out of those 242. We'll never have where a whole street loses all its trees of one variety. It, it was a big problem. So 407 trees were removed last year, mostly the ash trees. And out of the original 2,000 ash trees that we had, there's only about two, excuse me, about 300 left. And some of those uh, residents are treating, some are due to be removed in the future. It's really devastating and terrible, and I want to thank our forester for um, really stepping in. Another entity that stepped in was ComEd. They gave us a grant. Um, they have what's called a Green Region Award, and they gave our, our Oakland Green Team a grant to help a, a demonstration nursery. So um, the Oakland Reforestation Corp was formed, and our school district 123 stepped up, and they're going to do a demonstration nursery right on the corner there. Um, this is the campus of the middle school, Oakland Hometown Middle School. They had a 5K uh, event there to kick it off. Right now, it doesn't look like much. Uh, if you drive by, it's a couple sticks sticking out of the ground. It's pretty depressing in winter, but here's the, the concept of how it will look. And the thinking behind it is, with this grant money, we're buying immature trees of, of a lot of species, and the students will learn how, about managing the trees. When the trees are mature enough, they'll be put around the village, and it's a more cost-effective way to reforest our village. And here's the tree being planted at that event. The green team does a lot of wonderful things. Uh, on 54th Avenue and 103rd Street, excuse me, 52nd Avenue and 103rd Street, they, they did that um, beautiful landscaped area. They plant trees throughout our community. The green team partners with the chamber, partners with uh, the bike psychos and other community leaders and does the bike events. This is, I believe, a bike to work um, photo, but they do the big, the big bike tour of Oak Lawn every year, which is wonderful. Really, really popular is the e-waste recycling. This is now only on the second Saturday of the month from 9 to noon for Oak Lawn residents only. And I'm excited that CVS gave the village a grant this year for a, a medicine recycling. It, it's more of a, not recycling, but safe disposal of medications. If you flush unused medications, it goes into the water system and disseminates throughout the ecosystem. By disposing of it safely, it's, it's greener, and you don't have those medications around the house that children could get into or, or other mischief can happen with. I want to talk about our senior center. And we have uh, Kathy from Genesis in the back. Kathy reported to me that about 750 visits are made to the senior center every month. 
Overall in 2014, 7,157 seniors came in, and the number one thing they, they came to do is exercise. So um, I, I love that. Then the rest are your, your card games and the box lunch, very popular. But number one, heads and shoulders above everything else was the exercise activity. We're working to partner with our VFW, and we have uh, representatives of the VFW here today as well, uh, Commander Johnson and Joe Station, uh, welcome. We're looking to have shared use of the facility, not take it over, not, not anything like that, but we're looking to build a modest addition on the West End, and that would house senior services. The, the veterans use the facility in the evening and weekends, and the seniors use it during the day, so why not have that banquet room and other facility help the seniors so there'd be common areas that were shared. We're still exploring this. This is not a done deal. It's going before the, the VFW members. I believe there's 450 members that will vote on that. Once they vote on it, it goes to Springfield, and then Kansas City, is that uh, Kansas City? So we're a ways away from work, but it's going through the process. Um, I'm excited about it. So if anyone has questions or ideas on this, come talk to me. Our Oakland Jobs Program, fantastic. This is something kind of new. Um, when businesses come to town, a business like Mariano's, they reached out to the job program. And this was Trusty Desmond's brainchild, and he's really, really pushed it through. It was originally for kids coming out of school, but now it's open to any age. And the village works and partners with the businesses to try to help these folks get jobs, get people back to work. We have many, many local businesses participating, many in this room, I wanna thank you. And uh, you know, it's a great program. So if anyone has job openings, contact the jobs program and they can help you. New this year is the Oakland Arts Commission. Many people don't realize Oakland has no voice for the arts that's, that's standard in the community. So what are the arts? Visual arts, performing arts, music, dance, any of those things, painting, drawing, sculpture. You can see a little acorn up in the corner of that uh, graphic. And the phrase with the acorn, from, from a tiny seed, great things come. And you're gonna see an acorn motif with one of their big projects. Everyone's invited to come out to Fruity Cafe later this month, I believe, was it the 22nd? 20th. The 20th. And they're gonna have their first public meeting. There'll be art on display. You could meet the commissioners. If you have ideas for what you'd like to see the Arts Commission do, come on out and check them out. The Village has worked on media outreach. Um, we now have the board meetings, not just on Channel 4, but they're on Facebook and YouTube. The YouTube channel, I'm proud to say, is 90 videos, 11,619 views as of this morning. Our Facebook page could use more likes, folks. We have 1726, which is pretty good, but I'd like it more. The Village website, 228,000 page views to date since we um, changed over and we started tracking about July, the, the statistics. So um, very, very high usage there. 68,000 sessions, 44,000 unique viewers. And the number one thing people come to the website to look up, interestingly, is the job openings. So anyone who's called Village Hall has guaranteed to been frustrated with the phone system. Anyone here? You call, you try to find a department, find a person, you end up in phone hell, it just keeps, it, seniors complain, residents hate it. Um, when I was uh, brought into my new office at Village Hall, the phone there, this is a picture of my phone, it, the, um, the, the, the gentleman said, this is Ernie Kolb's phone. <laughs> and I said, great. <laughs> I said, is there a speaker button on there? They said, no, no speaker button. So I don't even know how to use this phone. So um, time to upgrade, definitely. We're gonna save $150,000 a year on the phone. The features will allow us to do special events, have special lines, special messaging. You can search by name, you can search by department. This is gonna roll out in the late spring. We're probably looking at late April to mid-May, somewhere around there. So we hear the frustration, we wanna fix that, and it's just good for everyone. Everyone. And um, our, our library, we will donate Ernie's phone to the historic <laughs> preservation room uh, for, for your gentle care. <laughs> Thank you. 
And let's talk about the library. Um, we have a fantastic library in Oakland. It is huge, it's in the center of town, and there's tons of things going on. They're working on rolling out their 2015 strategic plan. They've interviewed thousands of residents. They have a new logo they're gonna roll out. It's very exciting. Um, they believe this refreshed logo with the color scheme and typeface um, is gonna bring all ages to the library. And even though the look is there, they're gonna keep the same service that you love. Um, very exciting stuff. So what to expect? 70% of, and, and these graphics are from brochures that are on your tables, so please take them home if you wanna read more. But 70% of the usage of the library is actually audiovisual materials and youth services. So all of these things now are gonna be redesigned and on the ground floor ready for you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Nope. So your, your audiovisual uh, materials will be right up in front. And the youth services, this has been redesigned for the comfort of both children and their caregivers who bring them, whether it's family or, or others. Um, people asked for, for example, one entrance and exit into the area. They wanted to be able to not have a lot of people passing through, have the child have a chance to wander away so it's more secure. They have a wonderful um, department head, Jen Abler. She brought concerts, she brought the Lego show. She and her team uh, do wonderful projects, baby and toddler time, toddler art, baby goose, book buddies, Santa, all of these wonderful things. Expect it to only get better. The teen area, so the former computer center is gonna be the teen area, just for teens, a safe place for them to go and study. Um, it'll be closed during the day when school's in session and open just for them. The computer and training lab, this will now be uh, directly off the elevator on the second floor. So if you wanna learn how to use the computer, if you've never no, had an email account. There's many people who just don't have this stuff, don't know how to do it. This is a terrific resource. Check it out. And uh, we have a 3D printer also at the library, which I think is the coolest thing ever. So thank you for that. The history department, where Ernie's phone is going to be donated, will be now up kind of where the village green is upstairs, that big kind of curved wall. It's going to be in the northwest corner there. Beautiful location for it, and a lot more people will use it. And uh, I love this picture of the library. It's a double rainbow. It doesn't show too well. But if you have an e-reader or iPad, there are free unlimited titles you could get at the library. If you're interested in researching your ancestry, the genealogy resource is available. If you want to learn a foreign language, Mango has 40 different languages you could learn. And what they have that's pretty cool also is a Beyond Books collection. If you need a skeleton for your class, a microscope, a keyboard, a unique cake pan, they have it. Our library's awesome, and thank you for the representatives who are here. Thank you. I want to talk about our park district. Our park district is fantastic as well. It's been a really, really exciting year for the park district. Those of you who remember Rocket Slide Park, you have to see it now. It's unbelievable. It is Rocket Slide Park reborn. It is amazing. The little game you see to the right is an electronic game. The kids don't want to leave it. It's, it's a blast. If you want to see what the average face of the park district uh, uh, patron looks like, this is it. Woohoo! They love this park. It's a beautiful park. There's the rocket slides. And they, they don't have the pool anymore there, they have the splash pad. And this is even better. And it's better because it's less money, they don't have to have lifeguards there all the time. They could extend the season more, where the pool, it's such a short season. And kids really love this more, all ages play together. It's a beautiful thing to see going on. And there's the ribbon cutting for uh, the park on the left, and on the right is another ribbon cutting. This was a, a brand new park. Um, this one's called Commissioner's Park. Just beautiful. This is in District 2. And this is a different park where, where Memorial Park is high energy. You want to take the kids, you want to run around, you want to do this, you want to do that. 
This park is more of walking paths, easy going, couple benches to sit, a water feature. It's kind of where I would take my dad to go for a walk or where I would like to go if I just wanna get outside, relax a little. It's, it's, it's a different kind of park and I appreciate the park district doing this very much. Look at this beautiful um, wall sculpture out of carved brick. Recreation is for life, what a great motto. And here's some of the kids working on the water feature there. You don't really hang out in the water feature usually, but, <laughs> but it's beautiful. Um, Chicago Ridge Prairie, 90% of Illinois used to be covered by prairie just like this. In 2014, they did a total remediation and renovation of this, this area. There are, there are plants that are unique only to this area in the whole country. It's a beautiful, pristine little area. School groups go and study, nature groups go and study. I wanna thank the Park District for keeping that pristine. Over uh, on the other side of town, Worthbrook Park's being renovated. Worthbrook Park's getting a new skate park, a spray pad, walking paths, sand volleyball, and a new playground. This is almost done. This will be ready to go in June. It's beautiful. The park district is also looking to do a um, spec special recreation playground. This would be unique in the area. Residents I know have personally asked me, do we have anything like this? So they have a special appeal. If anyone's interested in helping them get the donations to get this going, they would love to hear from you. So please contact the park district. And I just wanna thank them also for making all parks at their December meeting non-smoking. Thank you very much. That's a great thing. I hate seeing all the kids playing and you know the parents chain smoking on the benches. It's not sending a good message, even though, you know. So I, I wanna thank you uh, very much for that. And thank you for the Park District for being represented so well here today, thank you. Our Advocate Christ Medical Center is redefining the east part of town quite a bit. It is huge, it's a 694 bed facility. They do tertiary quaternary care. It's a level one trauma center. It's famous for its cancer institute, its heart institute, its neuroscience institute, and its bone and joint institute. These are the statistics, I'm not gonna read them all, but what's important to know is they had 65,000 emergency room visits, 264,000 outpatient visits, tens of thousands of surgeries. Uh, the other figure to know, bypass hours, 1,682. I have several slides of their awards and recognition, and I'm not gonna read them, except just to make a note, I could have put I could spend an hour just talking about this stuff. Um, they, are, they are among the top 100 hospitals, among the America's best hospitals, distinguished for clinical excellence year after year after year. They're recognized nationally by US News and World Reports, and they're ranked in the entire state of Illinois, third. They don't just get awards from publications, but, but they're also, um, the, the health rating agencies rate them higher with zero deficiencies. Just wonderful. And the awards keep going. I have tons more slides. I'm gonna zip through them. I'm sorry, Mr. Lucart. Ken is here at the hospital. But everyone should know that when you check into Advocate Christ Medical Center, you are getting world-class care. And this is right in our neighborhood. The nurses are fantastic. Look at their accreditation and awards. This is the campus. Those of you who remember how the hospital started as a community hospital, um, it is that no more. The blue buildings are the new ones. Okay, so the, the lower part of the screen is 95th Street. You can see the new outpatient pavilion in the foreground with the parking garage. There are three new parking structures going up all together. And uh, most exciting is the new bed tower. Here's that outpatient pavilion and parking. This is the new face on 95th Street for the hospital. And what a lovely, lovely face it is. On a beautiful day when the, the clouds reflect in the building, it's just spectacular. This is the new um, bed center, bed tower. This is um, going up. And, and right now we're about maybe halfway through construction 
just stunning, spectacular, world class. This is how the campus is gonna look as you face north. The rotunda building is going to be knocked down. That's where that sign is on the lower right portion of the screen. And this is the parking structure. It's state of the art. It is world class. Um, it, it, look at the plantings on the different levels. It's just really gorgeous. And the building curves a little bit. This is how the campus will look. It, it will have a campus feel. Right now, it's like a war zone when you drive through. Everyone's so sick of the construction. Be patient. It will be unbelievable. And what an asset to have in Oak Lawn. Um, they help out in so many ways. They help. Um, in lieu of taxes, they make a, a contribution to the village for village services. They partner with the Museum of Science and Industry. Ben Carson uh, Foundation just opened up in, in school district 123, a reading room. Um, we all got to meet Ben Carson earlier. They support our PADS program, our emergency preparedness department, and cure violence. Um, the children's hospital adjacent there, also with the Ronald McDonald House, very busy as well. 32,000 emergency room visits, outpatient visits, 62,000. This is a, a neighborhood hospital. It needs to grow. We want to help them grow with us. We're committed to doing that, anything they need. They do cardiac surgery for kids. They do um, the neonatology, over 1,000, uh, hematology, oncology, pulmonology, endocrinology. Any specialist right here at home in our community, what a great resource. And again, more recognition and honors, just among the best in the, in the country. World-class care. And these, these, um, this hospital also does community outreach. They work on childhood obesity, child passenger safety in cars, and they have the, the Ronald McDonald care mobile going out, um, which is a great thing. And I've seen it around. It's pretty impressive. I'm going to talk about our school districts, and I don't want to take too much time, so I'm going to move kind of fast in the interest of time. School District 122 on the west end of town these are the schools in the district. Very, very active district, lots going on. They wanted me to let everyone know that they are um, working on a new master kind of plan for 2015, and the parents of all the school uh, kids should have that, and they're going to implement it. Couple highlights, Harnu School, it's gonna get an addition put on it. Eight new rooms, there'll be extra parking, and then the, the preschool park on the end will also be reconfigured. This will be really nice. This is going to happen this summer. Simmons Middle School, they have a new marquee, and they, they did this to connect better with the community. And in the, this fall, all the students are going to have Chromebooks to work out of for their studies. School District 123, and we have representation here today from them. Science, technology, engineering, and math is called a STEM program or a STEM fest. Northern Illinois has that. Um, the fifth graders from School District 123 totally swept the video categories. Each video category they won. Um, and they were asked to create a video explaining concept in science, math, engineering, or technology. Great job. The preschool program achieved gold circle status. Those of you in education know that this is the highest credentialing you can achieve. Um, by the State Board of Education. It's a testament to the excellence there. And what I love is they did a parent university last year. This is a new program uh, that uh, allows parents to learn with their children about the education process, things important to helping them learn and be successful. Um, there are sessions throughout the year. I congratulate and applaud them on that great program. And I do want to thank their commitment to the community as well. The tree nursery I touched on a little bit. I just love this idea. It's the village helping um, the schools, the schools helping the village, and the community benefits. Everyone is uh, awesome. The, the public service announcements, the kids had a contest. Um, the winner of the contest got to ride to school in one of our Hummer police cars. But we had 20 uh, public service announcements made by the kids. And uh, I, I just want to thank them. Great job. Everyone loved those and would love to do more of them. 
The thing that makes me the most proud and humble to stand up here and talk about our community is the service of, of these people. Um, kids especially in our community, these, these are great kids we have. For 10 years in a row, Oaklawn Hometown Middle School has led the state, number one in the state, on fundraising for Make-A-Wish. Last year, they raised $45,000 for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Altogether, they've raised over $400,000 for this charity. These kids are motivated, and the energy in the auditorium is, is just crazy. Um, they participate also in different community events, most recently participating at veterans events. The choir comes and sings, and then the band comes, and they set up in the VFW, and they, they play songs for the veterans. It's a wonderful, wonderful partnership. We hope it continues a long time. They also do the Feed Six program, the Family Fun and Health Fair, the Leaf Raking program, the Back to School Extravaganza. I could go on and on. Um, great kids. But it's time to move on. But thank you very much, 123. Anyone here from 218? I didn't see anyone. Uh, Richards High School is awesome as well. Go Bulldogs. 2014 set a new record for the number of advanced placement exams passed by students. These are some of the AP scholars at Richards. They also had 34 Illinois State scholars. This is a new record. Great job, kids. When we look at the Senior Center partnering, partnering with another organization, you know, our, our seniors, the Park District is looking to partner with Richards also. They're uh, looking to build a new theater, community theater. So it would be a premier stage for the, uh, their band, choral speech and drama programs, a community use also in the Park District. Great idea, I hope it, it pans out, um, would be great. The varsity softball team ranked fifth in the country in team GPA, and this is the second time in 10 years they did that. They also did the Special Olympics tournament. They call it the Matt Coacher Games. 200 students participated. This was just, I believe, last week. The National Honor Society members, I wanted to recognize them. Great job. And then Richards is also out in the community. The, the Running with the Bulldogs, I think they raised over $50,000 for the Pediatric Oncology Treasure Chest Program. You could see the St. Baldrick's events. They made quilts. They do all kinds of community projects. Thank you very much. We're very proud of you. And we're going to move on to Oaklawn Community High School. Go Spartans. The t class of 2014 volunteered over 15,000 hours. Imagine that. 307 kids volunteered more than what was required. And of those, 14 volunteered more than 100 hours. This young lady, Aziza Hassan, she volunteered over 500 hours, most of the time spent at Advocate Christ Medical Center. She was honored by Sheriff Tom Dart for the um, uh, Service Medal of Honor. Congratulations, and she'll get the Distinguished Service Award also from her school. All the seniors out there who have those big, heavy console TVs in their home often call the village and say, how can I get this to the e-waste recycling? I can't even move it. Well, the Spartans have a whole team of athletes who are looking for service hours, and they go around with the truck a couple times a year and pick up the TVs for seniors and also help with the snow shoveling. Great kids, great athletes, putting all that energy and muscle to good use. We appreciate it. Thank you. They got over $8 million in scholarship money, and 65 colleges and universities accepted 112 students so far. They are state champions in drama, state champions in group interpretation. They made state finals for the dance team. The Spartan Boys Cross Country Team is the reigning conference champion. Congratulations. And the Spartan Girls Basketball Team also is the regional champion. And back to the arts, they have a Congressional Arts Award winner as well. Um, this young man, uh, his art will hang in Washington, D.C. Thank you, Congressman Lipinski, for recognizing him. Our Children's Museum in Oaklawn has over 75,000 visitors and 50 states represented. Here's a map that shows where all those folks come from, most of them, all around here. The majority from the area, but they do come a long way as well. Indiana, Wisconsin, Michigan, they come here. 
the, the kids do fantastic things at the Children's Museum. It's a great event. Um, here's the, the uh, princess ball. I, I had a problem at first with the girls, you know, just dressing up in the frilly dresses. I was like, oh, there's so much more they could be doing. But I was thrilled. They had a uh, science person come and talk, and the girls rode around in their prom dresses in hovercrafts. Uh, I love it. Thank you. That's a great event. And those kind of things make the Southland recognize the Children's Museum and Adam Woodworth as a regional draw. He is now on the board for the Southland Convention and Visitors Bureau. Congratulations. He joined the board with Rick Harmon, the Hilton's general manager here, uh, is another member on that board. I want to highlight Park Lawn. And how am I doing on time? Am I doing OK? OK, I'm going to step it up. So Park Lawn is a great organization. <clears throat> they are everywhere in the community. They have an assisted, supported work program with um, employees working throughout the village. There's one at Mariano's. There's a guy at Webb Chevy. In Oakland, they are at Meyer Tool, Red Lobster, Fannie Mae, Complete Vision Care. I want to congratulate them. Park One takes care of over 990 individuals with disabilities. ComEd gave Park Lawn a grant. Um, they have an energy force team. This young man is named Andrew, and he joins the community uh, of Misericordia, Easter Seal Special Olympics. There's only a few elite organizations chosen to participate in this, and Park Lawn was one of them, and congratulations uh, to them. They, they do so much supportive service for everyone in a caring, loving way. They volunteer throughout the community. Some of the places they volunteer at are our parks, our children's museum, Meals on Wheels. They are out and about making a difference, just as everyone else in our community, living a very rich, supported life. Please don't forget tag days. I believe tag days are April. Uh, anyone know the dates for tag days? April 16th and 17th. Make sure when you see those orange vests, you show a lot of support to this great organization. Thank you very much. I want to zip through these pretty quick. I have about five minutes. I didn't think I was going this long. I'm sorry. It was all that talk about Ernie's phone. Slowed me down. Mariano's hugely successful. Building A will have Starbucks, Sleepies, and Firehouse subs. Building B, Meatheads, Massage Envy, and Chipotle. Cooper's Hawks opening in April. There will be a water feature with water cannons shooting water 50 feet in the air. And this is Cooper's Hawk where it's going. This is 111th and Cicero. I'm going to just show some of these photos. It's a mid-century kind of modern. Oops, it's not advancing. Oh, there it is. OK, took a little while. Good. That's uh, the elevations for it. Huge restaurant, simply gorgeous inside. Tom, I'm getting about a 10 second lag on my slides. I don't know if that's good. Here, it's catching up. Gorgeous inside. We can hardly wait. I mean, look at this. Come on. It's awesome. Who needs to go to Napa Valley? We have this right here. This is great. Look at the barrel room. This is outdoor dining. Right behind that fireplace will be that water feature I just told you about. Mariano's had the best opening in Oakland of any of his locations, and he has about 30 of them. Uh, Stony Creek will have Massage Envy opening soon. Meatheads will be um, to the left there, right next to the water feature. Starbucks, Great Clips, Speakies, excuse me, Sleepies, and, uh, and uh, Firehouse Subs will be this building. On 109th Street, the old Edgar building is going to have a new facade. A lot of interest in this. Expect a pancake house there, one more restaurant. I want to just highlight some of the other development. Women's Institute going up. Thornton's totally being redone. Across the street, brand new Hooters. Brand new Walgreens going up on 95th Street. Our new first Midwest Bank is spectacular. Our Oakland Bank and Trust, wonderful. We have a drawing of the Harker pumping station. This is 105th Street. This right now is a war zone as well. We thank the neighbors for their patience. It will be so lovely when it's done. It will be done soon. 
last message I want to give you, Oakwan is, is the whole bucket. We've got it all right here. We have a $689 million spending power just in our community. Within 15 minutes of here, $3.7 billion. We've got the whole bucket. Here's the problem. It's a leaky bucket. Okay, we're taking our full bucket and oop, a little drop went over here, a little drop. We're spending our money outside Oak Lawn. Remember what I said about the, the sales tax? If we could keep capture that money, grow that amount, make our business community strong, we're going to plug those leaks. That will keep your taxes low. The Shop Oak Lawn theme on every vehicle sticker this year is there for a reason. It is the way to keep our community strong. I want to thank the chamber for partnering with, with the village in so many ways and so many organizations. I want to thank you all for coming. And are there any questions? Any cards to pick up? No? OK, doesn't look like there are. So I just want to thank you for coming. Thanks for taking the time to listen. And let's shop Oak Lawn. And uh, again, thank you. I'd like to thank everybody for coming today. Um, we still have the banana.